Hey, eighth graders, today's lesson is a little combination of 3.1 and 3.2 force in motion. Your learning targets for today, I can describe the forces that two objects put on each other when they collide. So as we start working into chapter three, obviously we're going to work into Newton's third law, which talks about two objects when they hit each other and how they exert forces on each other. Okay, with that being said, your very first activity for today is to open up your OneNote and add collision to your vocab. Again, chapter three is gonna be all about collisions. A collision is the moment when two objects hit each other. And to add key concept number six to your key concepts page of your notebook, which states when two objects collide, a force is exerted on each object. So the two forces are exerted in the opposite direction, but they are the same strength. So we'll talk a little bit more about that as we work, okay? Before we go too far into our warm-up for today, you have a little message from Anna Gonzalez at the space sta uh, station. So thanks to you, we understand that even though the thruster force is the same strength on all pods, this pod was affected differently. So in chapter two, remember, we really focused on, all right, there was nothing wrong with our thrusters, so that must mean there must be something different about the mass of our little pod. Either our pod was too light uh, and the thrusters kicked on and moved it in the opposite direction, or our pod was too heavy and our thrusters kicked on, um, but they weren't enough to slow uh, stop our pod, so they just slow the pod down. Eventually, the pod hits the station and bounces off. Okay, at the end of that, we found out the mass of the pod and that it's heavier than normal. I think it was about 130 kilograms heavier than our normal space pod missions. Okay, so what we found out then is that uh, we understand that even though the thruster force is the same strength on all pods, this pod was affected differently because it was more massive. It had a heavier mass. The thrusters could only slow this pod down, and since it didn't stop, it hit the space station. So now we're going to look at the collision between that space pod and the space station. And this, you know, earlier in this, in this unit, we talked about the OSIRIS-REx, which was an actual example of this space pod. Um, and it had the exact same thing happen. It actually collected too many asteroid samples. It didn't slow down or stop. It just slowed down, hit the space station, and bounced off. Our team is thinking about a rescue mission, but we also learned that the crash made the space station move. We know the collision caused the pod to move in the opposite direction, but is the pod faster, the same speed, or slower than the movement of the space station? So after both of those hit, we saw movement of both the pod and of the space station. So how did that the movement after compare? Which one was slower, faster, were they the same, that kind of thing. How far away from the space station is the pod? How fast is the pod moving? Is a rescue mission even possible? Once again, we need your help with the questions. So to kind of start this chapter off, um, what we did, Ms. Grappo and I, is we sent out this survey to all the teachers. I don't have the data for that for you guys yet because um, we're just doing that today, okay? So what we're doing in class is I'm comparing the teacher data. They're taking the same little survey that you guys are to the survey that you guys are taking. So you'll need to right click and open up this survey and answer this question. A bug collides with a car windshield as the car drives 60 miles per hour down the highway. Which statement best describes the forces involved in this collision? So the bud, bug exerted a stronger force on the car. The bug did not exert a force on the car. The car exerted a stronger force on the bug, or the two exerted the same strength force on each other. And then explain your thinking. Be sure you guys submit that in the form. Okay, and then we'll go ahead and, like I said in class, we will compare those results. You guys can see how, if the, if the teachers are smarter than an eighth grader, or if the eighth graders are smarter than teachers. So we'll take a look at that. Okay, once you guys have that complete, let's go ahead and actually look at some of these collision forces in the sim. So with the sim, what's great is that we'll actually be able to see values for these things. So what are forces like in a collision? You guys will open up your sim link down here. Uh, you're going to go to the 3.1 homework. So here is our sim. Okay, and we're going to go up to these three little horizontal bars and we're going to choose the 3.1 homework. Okay. And in that, oops, let me find the correct spot. Okay, all right. So in that it says, set up the collisions between the objects and observe the forces and changes in velocity. Things you may want to try. Sorry. So a collision where an object runs into another object that is not moving. So you guys can set this up any way you want. What we do need to know about that is that this is going to be the same mass. So let's go ahead and take a look at our table on the next slide. So a collision where an object runs into an object that is not moving, you're going to want two objects that are the same mass. So we're going to grab two that are the same. Okay. 
We're going to have B be our stationary object, and A is going to be our moving object. It really doesn't matter what you guys put on there as far as a velocity goes. So we have one object that's moving, and it's going to hit this stationary object, and we're going to see what happens. Okay, so A stopped, B started moving. And what you guys are going to do here is you're going to type in your observations. Okay, you guys are going to complete some other ones similar to that. I kind of did that for you guys. So you guys might put A stop moving, uh, B started moving. Okay, on this one, a collision where an object runs into another object that is moving in the opposite direction. So for that one, you guys are going to have them moving at each other. So you guys probably want to have them move about the same velocity just to keep it even. So we're going to set this up going the opposite direction. So this one's moving to the right, this one's moving to the left. You guys can go ahead and hit run and see what happens. Okay, and tell me what you observe. A collision where an object runs into another object that is moving in the same direction. So for this one, you guys are going to have this one moving in the same direction as A, but obviously we're going to need a collision, so this one's going to need to be moving faster than this one. So I can set that up. They're both moving to the right, but A is eventually going to catch up to B. I'm going to make this go a little quicker just to make sure they collide, and then you can see what happens. Okay? And so do your guys' you guys can set that up however you want, do your observations. A collision between two objects of the same mass, you guys can set that up however you want. You're just showing a collision between two objects of the same mass. And a collision between two objects that have different masses. So you guys can again set that up and see your observations. So go ahead, take a second to do that activity. And when you guys are done, come back to this video and we'll talk about the modeling tool. All right, so you guys should have just made some observations in the sim. What I want you guys to do is model what that looks like when two objects collide. So you guys will go ahead and right click, open up this link, and you guys are gonna come into your modeling tool today, which looks like this. So basically we see that we have object B is moving towards object C, okay? Object C is not moving. Okay, then we're gonna have them collide right here. So this is during the collision, the second where they collide. And this kind of shows what happens to them after they collide and move away from each other. Okay, the only thing you guys will be modeling in this is the force um, of this collision. So what you guys kind of want to think about is just using the arrows. Okay, when you guys are looking at the exact moment that B and C are hitting each other. So you guys are going to use an arrow or arrows to show what you guys think that collision looks like. So go ahead. You might need more than one arrow. If you guys think that maybe B is putting a force on C, show an arrow to show how big you guys think that force is. If you guys think C is putting a force on B, you guys again would show an arrow to show how big you think that force is. Maybe you guys think that they're both putting forces on each other. Again, use multiple arrows in that case to show what those forces look like. So go ahead, take a second to model what those forces um, during that collision look like according to what you guys have kind of observed so far. And then you guys can screenshot just this little section right here and paste that in on slide eight. Okay, so go ahead, take a second, pause this video, go do your modeling tool on slide eight and seven, and come back when you're all done. Okay, so you guys should have just inserted your model there. And what we're gonna do is a little hands-on activity to explore this. So obviously those of you guys who are at home, um, unless you guys have these materials, you guys can just watch the video. So I posted your video on slide 11. So you guys can kind of take a second, read through your directions, uh, and then you guys will watch this video right here. So you can right click it, open it up. It's gonna take you into YouTube. Your little video looks like this. Um, I try to repeat myself a couple times so you guys can kind of see multiple times how this happens. But what you guys will be recording is for each of these. Okay, and there's three little trials for the first part. When we collide the rubber ball with the rubber ball, the second rubber ball is gonna be stopped. This one's gonna be pushed into it. So this first three trials that we look at are these first three collisions we look at. Um, one ball is gonna be moving, the other one's gonna be stationary, and then we're gonna watch that collision. So for this, you're gonna look at, all right, A puts a force on B. What does that force direction look like? You guys will use your draw tool to circle left, right, or none. Okay, uh, if we have the force of B, uh, putting, if you guys think B puts a force back on A, again, you guys would 
circle left, right, or none. And then what is the effect on object A after they collide? And what is the effect on object B after they collide? So you guys are going to do that for these three experiments. So the first one, we run in uh, two rubber balls. Okay. Uh, in the second one, I push a golf ball into a bouncy ball. And in the third one, I push a bouncy ball into a golf ball. So go ahead, uh, everything that's in this first column, the moving object is going to be object A. Uh, the stationary object that gets hit is going to be object B. Okay, so watch that part of the video, get the data you guys need, pause as you need, and then we'll move on to this second part. So for the second part, you guys will have two objects that are being pushed into each other. So they're both going to be moving objects. Um, there's only two parts to this. So the first one, we're going to have two rubber balls being pushed into each other. And then the second one, we're going to do a rubber ball or a bouncy ball and a golf ball and push those into each other. So same kind of thing. Uh, the one closest to the camera is going to be your object A. The one furthest away is going to be object B. And then you guys are going to talk about, all right, if object A puts a force on object B, what is the direction of that force? If object B puts an, a force back on object A, what does the direction of that force look like? And then what do each of those objects do after they collide? Okay, same with this one. What do those forces look like and what do they do after they collide? Okay, so I'll give you guys a second to pause this video, go in and watch the video to collect data, jot down your guys' data in your data table, and then when you're done, come on back to this video. All right, so for your guys' homework today, you're basically gonna do something very similar to what you just did in the hands-on activity, except what's great about the sim is you guys will actually be able to see values for your force, okay? So just like you guys had in your um, hands-on activity, the first part, you guys are gonna look at mass. So you're gonna go to your force in motion and you're gonna go up to 3.2, same mass collisions. So each of these pucks is gonna be the same mass and you guys will set them up differently to have them either be both in motion, one sitting still, whatever the case is. So again, you're gonna look at what you guys cause the object to do. It's either gonna speed down, slow, excuse me, speed up, slow down, start moving, stop moving, or change direction. And then to get your guys's force strength, you're gonna to wanna to go to analyze and look at the pink arrow and see what numbers associated with that pink arrow in Newtons. Okay, so here's how you guys are gonna set up these three trials. The first one's already kind of set up for you guys when you click on 3.2 mass, say mass collisions. So you can see your first puck is moving five centimeters to the right, your second puck is stopped. So you guys can see that's your two initial velocities right here for object A and object B. Okay, you guys can go ahead, hit run, let them collide. Notice that A stops moving, B starts moving, and if we clicked analyze, we can see that at that point where they collide, they each put a force on each other. So A puts a force of 100 newtons on B, but B also puts a force on A of 100 newtons. So because they are the same mass, we can see they have the same force there. So you guys would write force strength 100. Oops, sorry, let me have to click off my draw too well. Okay, I would go 100, why is it not typing? There we go, 100 newtons. A puts a force of, on B, so to the right. And B puts a force of 100 newtons to the left on A. Okay, and then the effect on object A, object A stops. Again, your guys' only option for this is start moving, stop moving, speed up, slow down, or change direction. So this one's going to start. Okay. And then you guys are going to set up the same thing. So you guys will go back to build. You guys are going to set this moving five centimeters to the right. This one's going to be moving for this one two centimeters to the left. So we're going to go ahead and go one, two. So change the velocity for that one. And again, you're going to see what happens to this. Go ahead and talk about your forces. Kind of really pay attention to those forces as you guys move through this one. Okay, then for the second part of this sim, same thing, except you're going to have different mass collisions. So you guys are going to go back in here. You're going to go to different mass collisions. So now we have one puck heavier than the other. So you guys will manipulate that as need be. So A is going to be heavier always than B. And then same thing there. Look at the strength of the force from your analyze. So the force that A puts on B and the force that B puts on A and in what direction. And then the effect on object A, the effect on object B. Okay, so notice how they might respond differently. OK, 
Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and delete this slide for you guys because I did something a little bit different. So with that being said, you guys are gonna revisit your modeling. So really examine what you guys saw for this strength of force objects for all of your simulation that you guys did. So I really want you to go back and review before you guys do your modeling tool again. So earlier you guys did your modeling tool, you guys showed me what forces you thought might have been happening when B and C collided. So based on what you guys see with your data in the sim, I want you guys to correct your um, your, excuse me, your modeling tool there. So if it was correct, you guys will just re-screenshot it and put it back on there. But most of you guys should be correcting them. If I had to guess, I would say that most of you guys have a misconception about this based on what we looked at in the survey. And even teachers, like I said, have that same misconception. So just because you guys got it wrong doesn't mean it's a big thing. The fact is that we're correcting this misconception. So correct your guys' modeling tool read your directions there and then go ahead and screenshot your corrected version right there like i said it should be different and then finally do your wrap up how do you think you did uh any questions and hand this in i hope you guys have a great day and i will talk to you soon